There are over 100,000 entries on Steam. Yes, some of these do include re-releases, remasters, and remakes, but there are still a substantial number of games on Steam. With the barrier of entry lowered on Steam, more and more games are getting released. This is a good thing because experimental games, you know, games that maybe would have never been developed by a major developer, those games actually have a chance of being released. You'd never see a major AAA developer develop a game like Bellatro. But this does have some negatives for both the gamers and the developers. For developers, their worry is that their games will be buried under the literal deluge of software available on Steam. And for the gamers, it becomes harder and harder to find unique games on Steam itself. But how does one navigate Steam? How does one find the perfect game tailored towards them? And how would one go through the process of finding a true hidden gem on Steam? I'm sure Valve recognizes that discovering a game on Steam is a big issue, especially for gamers. The front page does do a pretty decent job of highlighting some of the more popular games and some of the more popular upcoming games as well. But Steam does tend to highlight games that sell really well, especially on the front page. And you'll see games that resurge in popularity due to a number of different factors. For example, during the making of this video, Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 got popular as top sellers, mostly due to the fact that the Amazon Fallout series released and it's been a critical success. But of course, not all games get this luxury. There are truly a ton of games on Steam that get overlooked, but may be perfect for you or perfect for me. Steam has a myriad of different features, all of this to tailor game results for you. So without further ado, let's begin with the very first one. But before that, if you like this video or any other video I make, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech low life lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. The Steam Discovery queue is something that I've complained about in the past. One of my biggest issues with this is that it recommends games based on either extremely vague conditions or extremely questionable conditions. Sometimes it'll recommend games based on one or two games that you've played, but be in a totally different genre. Or sometimes it'll recommend games based on the most arbitrary of tags, such as pixel art or single player game or multiplayer game. But times have changed and Valve supposedly always improves their algorithm. So, it's been about two years since I've made a video about this. Do you think it's improved at all? Well, let's find out. This is one entire Steam Discovery queue session. The first game on this list is a game called Incursion Red River. It's a PvE extraction shooter, meaning there's no real players to kill. You fight against AI combatants either single player or with friends. I'm not really sure how long a PvE extraction shooter can be, but I mean, it could be pretty interesting. It's recommended based on the fact that I've played CSGO but only for like seven hours, which honestly isn't a great metric, but I mean, it's not one of the worst metrics. They recommend a tactical FPS because you've played a tactical FPS. Not a bad way to start. There might be some hope after all. Next is Infection Free Zone. From what I can gather, it seems like a zombie survival management sim. It very recently released, so I don't have any good information on this game, but from what I can tell, the reviews are kind of mixed, but it's an early access game, so hopefully it should get better. Anyways, the game was recommended because I've played Seven Days to Die, which is also a zombie apocalypse game. Thematic suggestions are actually pretty good. You like a zombie game? Here's another zombie game. That said, both Seven Days to Die and this game are different types of games. So it may not necessarily be the best recommendation, but it's not a terrible recommendation. Next up is Gigantic Rampage Edition. I'm gonna level with you. I'm not very interested in this game. It was recommended because I've played both Paladins and the Finals. And honestly, the Paladins comparison is kind of apt from what I can see that is. BMX Streets actually looks kind of cool. It's like one of those old BMX style games that they don't make anymore. Like the Tony Hawk games, but with bikes. But I think skateboarding is way cooler anyways. But this game was recommended because I've played Teardown? That's not even the same type of game. There's no bikes in Teardown. Teardown's a game where you, well, tear down structures, and this is a game where you bike. BMX Streets may be a good game, but it's not even a comparable game to Teardown, so this is objectively a bad recommendation. Pixel Gun is a free-to-play FPS, and guess why I was recommended this game? because I've played Apex and the finals. Actually, a pretty decent recommendation, all things considered. Next up is Headquarters World War II. It's a turn-based strategy game based in, well, World War II. Who'd have thunk it, right? It seems like an interesting enough game, but 
check this out. It was recommended because I've played Conker's Blade for 1.1 hours. You know, I haven't even actually played the game. I just updated the launcher and that's it. It's neither the same theme nor even the same type of game to begin with. So this is a fairly flimsy recommendation. Next is Buckshot Roulette. I think I've talked about this game a couple of times and people really like this game. These sorts of games always blow up and it's always a pleasure to see them blow up. These smaller indie titles. Anyways, why was I recommending this game? Well, it was because I've played Teardown, which why is it recommending this game? Because I've also played Teardown. They're quite literally nothing alike. Hmm, Summoner's War. Last I recall, this was a mobile game, but now it's on PC. I guess I shouldn't be that surprised. Another recommendation from Conqueror's Blade, they're not even the same type of game, and I've only played Conqueror's Blade for like 1.1 hours. They really shouldn't take that into account. Sky, the Children of Light is an MMO, and it's recommended because I've played Spiral Knights and Enshrouded. You know, the last time I've launched Spiral Knights was many, many years ago. And it still recommends games based on the fact that I've played Spiral Knights for quite some time. Leisara Summit Kingdom is a game that was recommended because I like atmospheric sandbox survival games. That's a very flimsy and very vague recommendation because, I mean, what if I don't like city builders and I'm gonna level with you? I don't like city builders. Probably one of the worst recommendations I've seen. Surely this is as bad as it gets, right? Vellum is a cooperative action roguelike, and hey, action roguelikes are kind of my thing. I've played so many action roguelikes that honestly, I'm not surprised it recommended me this game. But let's see if there's any other criteria that led to Valve recommending this game to me. Ah, Risk of Rain 1 and Risk of Rain 2. So let's see what's next. Ah, Spirit City Lo-Fi Sessions. I do like the idea behind this. It's not a game, it's a gamified focus tool. Valve recommended this to me because it was atmospheric. To be fair, this isn't a game, so I don't really know if there was any other way to recommend this title. Overall, I think the system seems to have improved, but some of the recommendations were still really bad. Valve still likes to throw games at you based on some of the most vague recommendations, which I'm not really sure if that's something they can even fix. I mean, Valve also has a different type of discovery queue known as the new releases queue. It's kind of the same concept, but it focuses on newer releases. Newer releases probably within like a couple of weeks or so. The big issue here is that you severely underestimate the amount of crap that releases on Steam every day. All but like maybe one game of this new discovery queue that I just did are like straight shovelware. So if you're watching this, do not do the new game queue. It's gonna suck. But even outside of these two, there are some other tools you can use. Steam has something referred to as the interactive recommender. It gives you personalized recommendations and you can even tweak those recommendations based on how popular a game is and how old a game is. As you can see here, messing with these two sliders messes around with the sorts of games you'll see. In theory, it's a more granular system that lets you decide what games you want to play based on your mood and if you're looking for something popular that everyone's played or something that no one else has played. Like for example here, I slide this all the way over the niche and it recommends a game called Critadel, which I've never played before. In fact, I've never even heard of this game before until now. You can choose a mix of newer but niche titles or perhaps older but niche titles or newer but popular titles. And there's a couple of games here that I've never seen before but look like they're right up my alley. One such example here is Pika Yune Dreams. It looks insanely psychedelic, at least from the trailer I've seen. I might try out the demo later, but yeah, as you can see here, you can look up games that are, well, games that you may be interested in that you've never heard of before. In addition to this, you also have access to tag filters. You can add tags to specifically search for games with those tags, like for example, I put Bullet Hell and Fighting, and I get some specialized results, like Maiden and Spell and Toho 15.5. You can also filter out games with specific tags. Like, let's say I hate all 2D games. Heck, let's say I hate all 2D platformer games. There, now it recommends games that are probably not 2D and probably not 2D platformers. But obviously the tag system isn't perfect. Tags are of course mostly user generated. I specifically excluded 2D games, yet sometimes I see 2D games like Them's Fighting Herds or Slap City. Those two games specifically have a 2D art style, and yet they still show up. They must have not been tagged with 2D. So this is a far better system that's tailored to you based on, well, all of the games you've played. It also has the added benefit of being able to filter out games that are popular or or niche, or perhaps filter out games that are old. 
And you can also filter out games with specific tags. Maybe you don't like horror games, you can always exclude horror games. Or perhaps you only like Metroidvanias, you can search up Metroidvania titles. It's a pretty good system so far, but I think there should be some more options. Like for example the Age Slider. The Age Slider only lets you filter out older titles, but I would like to see a feature where I can filter out newer titles as well, in case I'm looking for some more historical titles to sink my teeth into. And probably the last Steam recommendation feature is the Steam Curator page. Unlike some of the other Steam features listed here, they don't recommend games algorithmically, but rather these are manually ran pages. Curators have the ability to write 200 character reviews, and they have the ability to link full reviews if, say, for example, you have a video or perhaps an article on a website. Some of these are run by content creators. Some curator pages are run by repeatable outlets such as Steam Deck HQ or PC Gamer. And quite a few are gimmick pages, like for example, Neptune Reviews. Look at this, come on, seriously. And sometimes you have thematic Steam curators, like hentai lovers. Yes, as the name implies, they review hentai games, but they also sometimes review non-hentai games. You also sometimes see useful curators. Curators that focus on a specific aspect of a game, such as Co-Optimus. They focus on showcasing games with co-op gameplay. So yes, Steam curators can be useful. They can be useful pieces of information. As for finding repeatable Steam curators, I mean, you can always sign up for my Steam curator page. But finding more repeatable Steam curator pages, that task is on you. The Steam recommendation problem is an eternal problem. Some games just get lost under the wind. And while Valve has done a tremendous job trying to figure out how to recommend games to people, it's not perfect and sometimes you have to rely on outside sources to get good information on games you may have never heard of. But there are two great resources that I refer to whenever I'm looking for a new indie game to play. First and foremost is, of course, Twitter, surprisingly. Yes, I know, Twitter has this reputation of being a cesspit of hatred and lies, but if you look at hashtag game dev or hashtag indie game, then you'll see a glimpse of hope. Here you'll find multiple indie projects you've never heard of, and you'll see a ton of behind the scenes materials. You get a greater insight as to how game development actually works, as well as you know, some of the stuff that they've been working on behind the scenes. And here you'll find some very interesting projects from some very interesting developers, some of whom I've been following on Twitter for quite some time now. And on the topic of Twitter, I also have a Twitter myself if you want to check that out. So yeah, I'll use this opportunity to showcase some of the projects that I'm looking forward to. Some of these projects don't actually have names yet because, you know, they're in development games. But the ones I'm showcasing right here do have names. So, you can always check out their Twitter accounts in case you're interested. Yes, you will need to have a Twitter account to really browse Twitter to its best ability, and you should probably do so before Elon Musk charges you a small fee to register for Twitter. But if you're not into Twitter, the actual best way to find new indie games is to wait for the Steam Next Fest. There are celebrations of upcoming games, featuring demos, lots and lots of demos from lots and lots of developers. Generally speaking, there are three Steam Next Fests every year. The Next Fest features all sorts of games from all sorts of different genres, and a lot of really popular games like Bellatro actually found initial success during the Steam Next Fest. So you're bound to find something that appeals to you, but also you're bound to find the next great indie game. And even outside of the specific Next Fests, there are various different fests for various different genres. Like as of the making of this video, there's actually a Steam FPS Fest going on. It's a celebration of FPS titles, and while yes, there are a lot of older FPSs that are showcased here, there are also a lot of newer FPSs with demos that are showcased here as well. Yes, I generally make videos on Next Fest, and sometimes I'll even make videos on specific you know, festivals such as the FPS Fest. Spoiler alert, that's probably going to be the next video I do. FPSs are a dime a dozen, but there's a lot of FPSs out there of different types. Anyways, I really hope that you learned something from this video. What matters isn't playing what's popular, but what really speaks to you as a person. Regardless of popularity, or regardless of how old a game is, your perfect game is waiting for you out there and I hope you've learned enough to figure out how to find your own perfect game, even if there's no marketing. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.